Good afternoon. My name is Scott Carlin, and I'm delighted to be with you to celebrate this year's Peace in the Park. Central Park is such a beautiful and important part of New York City, the perfect place to celebrate peace. Today's theme is one planet, one people, one purpose and dream. I wanna thank you for par your participation today. I wanna thank the Brahma Kumaris and the other organizers for all their hard work. It's engagement like these that will help expand awareness in the world, but there are ongoing efforts to build cultures of peace. My one core message to you today is that we have the technologies to provide everyone with education and basic health care. We have the technologies to transition quickly to safe, carbon-free sources of energy. We can even generate the necessary political will and global solidarity for these actions. To get there, we must create strong cultures of peace around the world. Cultures of peace we accelerate, will accelerate our progress because it will liberate our love for each other, for the natural world, and for ourselves. In 2022, love is no longer the realm of the poets and the idealists. Love is the gift we can give to each other and to ourselves to liberate us from our fog of lies, fear, trauma, and inefficiency. How much of our energy is expended and wasted each day by either a lack of focus, miscommunication, or outdated cultural norms and laws? Let me take one minute to step back 2022 into a larger context. Since 1945, the world has experienced an unparalleled period of growth. Human population has increased from 2.5 to 8 billion, and today's global economy has grown to $100 trillion, a 13-fold increase since 1950. Our challenge is to shift from an outdated growth mentality to a sharing and caring mentality, particularly in economics. Climate change and biodiversity are two of the planet's many planetary boundaries, and they're forcing a deep rethinking and core questions. Who are we, and how do we understand our relationship to each other and the natural world? I encourage you to work to expand your own peace work. The Peace Alliance offers guidance on five pathways for peace, cultivating personal peace, community peace building, practicing peace in schools. Note, not just teaching peace in schools, but practicing peace in schools, humanizing the justice system and fostering international peace. The Global Alliance for Ministries and Infrastructure for Peace will host a youth peace video competition in October. Try to get young people to submit short two minute videos on the theme, Why You Are Peace. There are deadlines coming up this week, to, so get those videos in quickly. If you're in the United States, work with Barbara Boxer's office. She's working to create a department of peace building. And you can read about that in HR 1111. If you're from another country, become active in those national efforts to build or strengthen ministries of peace. Cities, states, and provinces can create their own offices of peace. The United States Black Lives Matter has created a renewed context for exploring more peaceful ways for government to work with citizens that go beyond traditional and often punitive policing policies. At the United Nations, Sustainable Development Goal 16, promote peaceful and inclusive societies as 24 indicators to measure progress. In addition, I encourage you to learn more about that set of indicators and how progress is happening in your own country. And I also encourage you to read a new document the Unitive Narrative, produced by the SDG Thought Leaders Circle, which I'm a member of. This narrative can help governments accelerate progress on the SDGs by placing peace consciousness at the center of the SDG agenda. I don't want to give you the false impression that peace building is primarily about creating new and hopefully better bureaucracies. Peace building really starts from our shared vulnerabilities, our fears, our hurts, and our commitment to heal and transform ourselves and the world. In that sense, peace building and peace making is really a 24 seven commitment first and foremost to ourselves. James Lovelock died this week on his 103rd birthday. 
He was a leading proponent of the Gaia theory, that the earth is a self-regulating system. This context of social and ecological interdependence is redefining our entire worldview. Regenerative economics is an example of this type of transformative thought and practice. Peacework is essential to these efforts. Let me end with a quote from the Brahma Kumaris of Toronto. The best place to look for peace, love, and light is within, and the best time to look for it is now. Have a great celebration today, and thank you very much for joining us.